Hello everybody, this is James from the Tech Nook. Uh, today I want to talk about something that's not totally music therapy related, uh, but used creatively, I think it can apply to music therapy and perhaps places where a uh, music therapist works. And it is a fun little technique called toy hacking. Uh, so the idea behind that is making toys accessible. Uh, so I, I mean, I feel like accessibility is a huge component to our our work. So what can we do to make things more accessible to those, uh, to our population? Uh, so for example, um, simple toys like this little, like this little guy usually requires a pretty strong squish to press. Uh, and the component here is this little thing on the inside um, that also has a mechanical function to open the mouth. Uh, that's pretty hard to do. Toy hacking is the idea of adding a um, headphone jack. Um, bye bye. Headphone jack to the back of it or somewhere of it, on it. Uh, plug it in and using a regular switch that we might have to press to activate. Um, unfortunately, this part is also the mechanical part of opening the mouth. You do need to squish that. But the electric component to it, we have now hacked to be switch accessible. So the idea here is accessibility. So I use toy hacking in collaboration with PT, OT, and speech often, um, as well as recreation. And with music, I like it um, because there are toys that we can use to then hit other instruments or, I, honestly, I just like seeing the insides of things. Um, so it's kind of fun. Um, I th and it can also open the door to more complex and advanced wiring, uh, which then you can use to create your own instruments using uh, something like the Circuit Playground um, which you can program uh, music notes, different sounds, um, and a couple different ways to play. Uh, but it's a little more complicated to do the actual programming, um, and a good simple way to just get your feet wet is to do some toy hacking, because the worst thing that you can do is just break the toy. Um, and unfortunately, oftentimes, there are going to be some casualties. Um, some in, some toys work better than other toys. Another, another good reason behind this is that pre- adapted toys, like toys that you can buy that are adapted by different websites off the internet, usually cost a lot of money. Um, and the reason behind this is because it does take a person um, actually hacking it, um, hacking the pre-existing toy. So you're paying for their service to do it, which is not unreasonable if you look at it um, in terms of a service. But if you're looking at it in terms of like, that's really expensive, we can't afford that in our facility for everybody. If you can learn how to do it, it makes it much more affordable and it's a lot of fun. Um, so a toy you could buy for $10, um, hack it yourself, um, you've saved all of that money. And it's something you can do. And these toys you buy off the internet that are adapted are just the same as one toys you can get off Amazon. So my favorite example is the toy adapted shark. So the shark is this giant helium balloon that is the size of a small child. And the flippers in the back, which are left and right um, on the remote, make it swim. Um, and so I've hacked it, um, and it's really fun to fly uh, using two buttons instead of two big switches um, instead of two sm tiny small buttons on the remote. Da da. Da da. Da da. Da da da. Adapter Shark. Other ideas, other things that I have here. Um, remote control cars work fantastically because oftentimes the buttons are just, the joysticks are just up, down, left, and right. And the most simple way to hack a, um, a remote control car is to do two buttons, one to go forward and one to go backwards and turn. So that way you have access to being able to go just about anywhere through some careful maneuvering. Other objects, uh, remote control mice, really fun to scare people. More complicated ones, such as the digger, the backhoe. This one goes forward and backwards, as well as turns here, as well as moves this up and down. Summertime is fun, so squirt guns are also, oh, battery powered squirt guns are really fun to do. Get everybody wet. I've also mounted that onto the side of a Halloween costume, which was a tank that we put over somebody's remote, or uh, that we put over a power chair, they were able to drive it and squirt people with water. Um, 
Cars are also fun to drive over paint. My favorite is the remote control whoopee cushion. Who doesn't love a good fart prank? Honestly, the best one. You hide it, they hide it, hide it by somebody's chair, somebody else sets it off. Remotely, everybody laughs. And then there are functional hacks uh, that I've done. Uh, one involved taking apart a computer mouse and making that switch adapted, um, at least for the left mouse click. Um, so this is a trackball mouse um, where a user can just use the trackball. Um, and then I put it in a, a switch port um, that you can plug in any switch to. This one is a um, just a little lever switch that one can use now as a mouse. Um, you could plug in any other switch as well to it if you need a bigger switch or something more like a sip and puff switch um, that can be used now as a left mouse click. Um, I did another version of these where it had two, um, a left and a right switch mount. So with a mouse like this, a client, resident, user um, could access the mouse for a variety of programs such as GarageBand or Soundtrap, um, clicking through YouTube, surfing the net, uh, video editing, or any mouse-driven digital audio workstation, really. Um, and then with an on-screen keyboard of the computer, you could use it to just click and type um, anything you need. Okay, the insides can get tough. Uh, this is gonna be a very basic overview. You're gonna need some tools. Here's a list of tools you need. Cool. To get all those, I will provide a link to an Amazon list to make it easy for you. So the idea is you're going to take apart the remote. Not so much the toy. The toy needs to stay intact. Um, you're going to take apart the remote controller. So for example, this is a great toy, um, a great example of one that already has forward and back and turn. Very common with um, baby toys or one's first remote control toy. Simplifies it, two buttons. Uh, forward, back and turn. You want to take apart, so screwdrivers, keep track of where all of the screws went. Um, you look at the insides, the guts. The guts can get kind of messy. For example. Um, you're going to want to find the actual buttons. Usually the buttons look pretty similar to just these guys here. And it's a simple switch, one's for up, down, left and right. Um, you're going to want to identify um, where the contact points are on the back side. Usually you can do it with doo -doo, just two wires or a, an alligator clip. What you'll do is take one alligator clip to where you think the button is and the other side to the other side. And if when you poke the two alligator clips to the two contact points, if it activates the toy, then those are the two points you want to focus on. So you will remember those two points. You'll take your uh, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. You will make, you will solder two wires, keep them different so you can see them. In the end, it doesn't matter in this case. Um, one for positive, one for negative, because um, the headphone jack is what switches get plugged into. Um, any of those big back switches, any of your other enabling devices um, use just plain old switches with a headphone jack on the other side. So simple. Sort of. Um, anyway, so you're going to make one of these bad boys um, and then that's what you solder into the jack or a headphone um, on the circuit board. So you've kept track of the two points that you need to solder and you solder it in. Here it is done. These two guys here. Um, so I've soldered the headphone jack into that for forward and another one into back. Um, and this one I did forward and then also the back and turn. So I found the one for the turn. I've connected one side of the back to one side of the turn. And then the headphone jack, um, one side goes to the other end of back and the other one goes to the other end of turn. So the idea is that, um, the closed circuit is actually cutting through both the back and the turn together. That's how it adds together. It's a little complicated to um, describe like this, but hopefully you get my point. Um, feel free to ask questions about this, like email us and we will do our best to walk you through it. Um, YouTube is also a good resource. I think if you just look up toy hacking, we have some great resources. 
You want to be careful when you do this because sometimes the solder joints to other components are really fragile. Um, and if your solder is too hot, you might melt it. So make sure you don't melt your components because that's another way to brick your toy. Uh, but sometimes they're easy, you can fix it. Like this one, the joint came off of the battery pack so you could just solder it back onto the battery. Um, all right, then comes putting it back together, which sometimes goes well, sometimes does not go well. This one did not go well uh, because of the way that it had to go back together uh, by putting the, the soldered points back down. And because of the wires are there, it just there's just no room for the wires, unfortunately. Um, this one is a little bit better. Uh, I meant to put these, uh, before I screwed it back in, you, I had to put these back in, but I didn't. Um, this one fits a little bit better. There's a little more space on the inside of the controller box um, and I actually cut holes on the side so the headphone jacks can be just plugged in um, and then screwed into there. Um, there are two different kinds of headphone jacks you can get. One that looks like it has its own little case and other ones that have little screws uh, that you can, or things that you can screw back into the toy uh, with little washers. Oh, I'm just flying through this, you know. Just flying through this. Some of the tools uh, that we do have that I really like using. Alligator clips with the headphone jack into it. It's great for testing. Um, so you can plug the two parts into what you think is supposed to be right. And then you plug your switch. Plug your switch in. And then it's good for testing. And you click the switch. Beep, beep, beep. If it works, you're in business. If it doesn't, you're not in business. Another thing to look out for is if it's just going off while it's plugged in. That's never a good sign. That means you have found the wrong contact points and what you're doing is just bypassing um, the switch itself. Um, opposite to the alligator clip with the headphone jack port is the one with the headphone jack. Uh, these are great for when you want to make your own switches. Um, so this is the same end as a switch. These are two alligator clips. You can use aluminum foil and or copper tape or your imagination um, to Clip one end to aluminum foil and the other end to aluminum foil. You bring the two parts together, you've made your switch. So a switch um, can be made in a lot of different ways. Um, I like to mass produce a bunch of these headphone jacks at the same time. Sometimes they have three bits to it, uh, ground and positive and negative. You wanna make sure you do the positive and the negative. We don't need grounding. Solder, wire, at least two colors is good. Needle nose pliers, wire cutters, wire strippers. I don't know where my wire strippers are right now. Something to hold things. A little nice soldering iron. Uh, solder cleaner. I like this one because it scrapes it. It's like a little Brillo pad on the inside. That's the quick gist of toy hacking. Why do we like to toy hack? Why do I like to toy hack? Um, you could do a lot with it. Um, it's fun. It's crazy. It gives the residents uh, or your clients accessibility. And I really, really find that important, especially for uh, accessibility to make music, um, especially if there are physical limitations. Um, what ways can we as a therapist or tinkerer or person interested in technology, what can we do to make the lives of those around us easier um, and more accessible? I've had a lot of just beautiful memories uh, and experiences with our residents their families and the staff uh, because we've we've adapted the world around them uh, to help them reach it and play. Um, I work with children so play is a huge component to my work. Um, sometimes it involves music, most times it involves music, sometimes it involves just the play. Um, being client-centered sometimes it takes us away from the music and just making fart sounds or chasing your nurse around with a toy rat or painting with the wheels of the car or putting a squirt gun on top of a car driving the car around squirting people uh, I've rigged up a system remote detonator where we have, I have my test bottles here that are filled with uh, Pepsi clear diet Pepsi clear diet, I don't know it's just water uh, and I have different spigots here with different holes at the top there. This one we've got four little holes and that one's got a slot. I have here attached with paper clips to hold the Mentos in the tube that are attached to string that are attached to tongue depressors attached to this car that has, that has seen better days. Here we have the remote starter here, the detonator. You should see the effect. Keep pulling the pins on its own. Ready? One, two. 
Roman numeral three. Yay! And then it goes. So it'll be a button. Any, any sort of switch. Press it once. It's on. It goes over it. And we press it again and turn it off. These are wonderful experiences, especially in a uh, long-term care facility. So this is their home, um, and creating these experiences for them is profoundly important um, to me as a therapist, as a person. Um, and since I have the ability to create these experiences, to create these devices, and bring these experiences um, to the residents, I think it's really important that I do that, and I am able to do that. Um, so. Thank you for tuning in. I wanted to keep this short. Hopefully you got a taste for what toy hacking is. Um, there's a lot you can do. Word of warning, TV remotes, terrible. Um, anything with these little soft kind of buttons, on the inside, it's not gonna be a hard switch. It's going to be this little flat piece of metal that then gets, the button is actually pressed by the rubber piece with something conductive on the bottom side. If it feels like a remote like this that the buttons are soft those never go well because solder doesn't stick to that stuff i tried toy hacking a nintendo joy-con remote that was that was a bear um broke it it's a tough lesson usually the more simple toys are easier the cvs clearance rack of things that make noise um or light up really great things to practice on um because they're cheap um, especially as you're beginning this. Um, don't be afraid to make those mistakes. Um, much like I think we probably ask of our clients to not be afraid again with this, don't be afraid to make mistakes. You will, I guarantee it. And that's the hardest lesson. Usually it's like one small thing that just breaks and it's toast. But don't be afraid of that and don't be discouraged by it. Um, I think there's a lot of rich experiences that can be done, um, that can be had uh, because of tiny little remote control rats. And parts. And with that, I think I've said parts a couple times on this, so I think I've met my quota. Um, thank you everybody. Happy Technogeeks.